I'm back with a monthly update on Cosmic Desktop, the Rust edition. Cosmic's August updates bring incredible news, which I've been looking forward to and hinting at for the last couple months. And it's all about customization, which we all know the Linux community is a big fan of. Let's get into this one and discuss some of the changes that are coming to Pop! OS, the Rust Cosmic Desktop. It's back to school season, so grab yourself a brand new discounted computer and let's get back to Cosmic Class. Our new, not yet released, Rust-based desktop environment for Pop! OS and other Linux distributions is filling out with some essential systems that can cater to desktop environments to both users and developers alike. Customization is one of the main focuses for Cosmic and was a huge focus for us in August too. As I've been mentioning for the last few months, there's been hints of Cosmic trying to develop a way to further customize your system, and they're giving us some preview of that today, as well as mentioning some more information about the API that they're going to give to developers to further customize the system. We're not locked down like we are with GNOME or other desktop environments having to use certain extensions to better our experiences. Instead, we have things native. Cosmic Appearance has been worked on and updated, although after launching things on my version of Cosmic Desktop, I was unable to actually use Appearance. It doesn't look like it's up to date enough, at least the package for Cosmic Settings that would include Appearance. Not a big deal, we'll go over it through the blog post instead, but I'm looking very forward to actually installing this on my system and using Cosmic Desktop. As you can see, many errors going on in the background and not much has changed here inside the settings and they're definitely heavily focused on that Cosmic Appearance tab. Anyways, right now it's just showing nothing. Just so you know, if you update your setup, you won't get anything more than likely, at least for now, especially if you're using my installation tutorial. Anyways, back to Cosmic Appearance. One of our objectives early on was to provide an easy, meaningful way to personalize your desktop's experience. In order to build customization into the foundation of Cosmic Desktop, we needed to make sure that the design system was themable. So with this first picture here, we notice something very important, import and export. This supposedly will allow you to import and export themes directly into your appearance for the desktop, allowing you to take changes that you've made to your desktop with you on the go or give it to someone else, which is fantastic. I, I love seeing this built into the core desktop experience. Fantastic work by System76, but only these little things you're seeing here are more than likely not what can be imported and exported. Instead, we need to go to the next section to actually see the power of this customization. They say you'll be able to customize how your system looks directly in cosmic settings beyond changing from dark to light mode and choosing an accent, which is fantastic for beginners because not all of us know how to go through and change code. Instead, if you can do it natively through one of their dialogues, that just makes it easier and more accessible to users. Color you can change in the application background, interface, text palette, tint, and neutral. You'll also be able to choose from one of three styles for the corner radii used throughout the interface and set an interface density. And here they give us an example of menu items and pages completely in the settings that can be customized. Notice what they've made is basically a generic layout, which I'm hoping devs and users alike are going to be able to edit. Imagine being able to move your menu items around, name them whatever you want, put in labels that you want, where they're located, and even assign icons to make your desktop environment really yours. It's not only this, because we're going to get into theming support soon, but before we do, smash that like button if you enjoy seeing these Cosmic Desktop updates. I'll keep them coming and help me get to 50,000 subscribers here soon by subscribing below. To ensure these options work seamlessly, the design system is architected a certain way. Like I was trying to clue you into before, nothing in the components of the design system is meant to be hard-coded. So the system relies on using variables, not merely for colors, but for spacing, icon sizing, and corner radii. Think styling templates that you can edit, much like you can do in CSS for HTML web pages. Let's keep looking through. Here is another example with a different color scheme. One of the challenges in coloring customization relates to maintaining necessary color contrast while giving enough freedom to create. To solve for this, the theme colors are automatically derived from a few base colors you can customize. For example, when you select a specific application background color, the system uses it to derive colors for other surfaces and text placed on those surfaces. When you choose a text tint color, the text color automatically adjusts to use this tint. Neutral tint brings subtle tint into various widgets, including the background and text in search input and tabs. To achieve this result, we converted the selected custom color from sRGB to OKLCH OK and manipulate the color lightness value while keeping its hue and chroma values the same. 
And here's an example of what that means exactly. If you choose a background color, for example, notice how other colors were derived for you. That way you can see very good contrast between selected menu items, icons, toggle buttons, and text, as well as highlighted or selected text. But it also focuses on things like what the search menu will look like. Moving on, most of the calculations that happen in the background have been implemented, including customization of colors. We've also incorporated spacing and corner radii variables and working towards corner radii styles and density options as well. So if you didn't think that was enough customization, developers get excited because with the Cosmic Application API, we've added an application API to the libcosmic widget library to provide a framework for developing applications and applets in Cosmic Desktop Environment. It automates the integration with Cosmic theme support along with Wayland protocols, Cosmic configuration backend and common application elements like header bar and navigation. For application developers, this means convenient development without having to worry about managing the low level desktop and window manager integrations. For us, this ensures consistency across Cosmic applications and applets, AKA a way for developers to create widgets, applets, and support for their own applications in Cosmic using the application API. Another welcomed feature to the desktop environment. We've all come across Linux distributions with desktop environments that have inconsistent theming because of lack of support. A few more updates of with the desktop environment tiling with mouse. Mouse driven tiling has been designed to and implemented along keyboard tiling as two parts of the same feature. While a window is being tiled with the mouse, indicators show which windows are grouped together while a transparent background instructs how that window will be arranged in its new position. So what does that mean? Well, I'm trying things out right now and it looks like it can tell you whether or not it wants to stack windows and or create a brand new tile. Either way, now you can actually use your mouse in order to move things around instead of just, instead of just the arrow keys. Honestly, that's kind of exciting. Let's see if we resize whether or not we can resize with the mouse now. I can select, but it doesn't seem like I can actually resize, but I could be doing this wrong. Either way, there's not much mention of it, so I couldn't get it to work. Basically, here's the target zones for how the cursor will be determined where the window will be placed. If it's up top, new window takes half of the existing window horizontally at the top. If it's in the middle, create a stack with an existing window and a new one. I already showed this functionality. Down here, new window takes half of the existing window horizontally at the bottom. New window takes up half of the existing window at the right. New window takes up half of the window on the left. So I actually kind of showed most of this functionality. I just didn't realize that it doesn't do the full stacking, grouping, and tiling support, like resizing things. In addition to these three zones, the window may be placed into two windows to create a new column and tiling grid. Switching between the mouse and keyboard tiling should feel seamless, so while implementing the design, we can cut into duplicate code between two features. The result also turned out much more readable tiling code, says Victoria, a System76 engineer who worked on this implementation. Tiling is one of the most complex parts of our shell, so that was a personal highlight for me. To the Notification Center, the Notifications applet has been integrated in Cosmic Desktop. Unlike Pop OS 22.04 long-term support, notifications exist in their own applet separate from your calendar. In addition, multiple notifications from the same application will stack and in the Notification Center, reducing clutter, see this action below. AKA, if you get more than one notification, they will be stacked over here on the right inside the Notifications Center. And it can also show up one by one up top as they come in. That way you don't miss a old notification, but still get your new ones. User permissions, applications require user permissions to perform certain functions, such as using the microphone and virtual chat in Jitsi or Zoom. Keeping applications isolated from these functions protects your privacy and requiring your consent to access processes that may otherwise feel invasive or leave your system vulnerable. Cosmic Desktop now uses Polkit agent, which facilitates communication between these applications in your system and prompts you for a password when a task requires your special permissions and needs. Fantastic work by them. If the system now recognizes whether something requires extra privileges, now the system's gonna recognize that and ask for extra consent. Finally, last little bit here, x Wayland fixes for the pop-ups and drop-downs. x Wayland is compatibility layer between applications. The X compositor and Wayland compositor display ser server or protocol used in Cosmic Desktop environment. The compositor connects your mouse clicks to what's being displayed on screen so that the correct action takes place, making compatibility between the two of the utmost importance. X application menus were sometimes not opened when clicked and experienced further issues after being moved to another display. We've implemented a number of fixes to address these bugs. That's all the updates for now. There's a lot of juicy info. We hope you took notes. Tune into next month's class. 
for another lesson in Cosmic Desktop Environment. Large updates this month for System 76's Cosmic Desktop Environment based on Rust. It's exciting to see how far they've made it in the last month and the continued development of Cosmic Desktop. Are you planning on trying it out once it comes out? Would you like to know when it comes out? I might have some ideas. I could make another video, but in turn, subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.